Hi guys, it's uh, Saturday morning. I'm getting ready to go into work. Uh, had a pretty fun night last night. Uh, a friend of mine, um, his name's Wayne. He buys and sells and uh, rebuilds saws. So he's got uh, a little bit more of a customer base built up than I have. So he gets cool saws from time to time. and uh, Sometimes I get cool ones and sometimes he gets cool ones. And every once in a while we exchange. And uh, he ran across a cool one a couple weeks ago that I decided I needed to have. So uh, I figured I'd show it to you guys before I headed off to work this morning. Look at this beautiful old turd. A little bit of a busted top cover here. Um, it does close the gap completely up if I hold it together. So what I think I'm going to do is just cube on this on the inside. And if necessary, sand it and cube on it on the outside because it's pretty roughed up here. Uh, I did get a chain brake cover. Uh, the chain brake works, but it's, I mean, it's... As soon as you put it on the saw, you take the brake off. As soon as the saw vibrates at all, it clicks the brake on. There's some pieces in here that I think are worn past their service life. And I don't know if I can actually get serviceable parts for that anymore. Um, let's talk about the saw some more. It does have a little bit of scoring on the exhaust side. It does still run and it runs really well. Um, this is going to be one of them where, uh, I am probably not going to mess with this, at least right now. I'm going to run it a little bit, uh, very rich. Just sit down. Crap on the camera. So and, uh. I'm going to run it fairly rich the way it is now. It's got a 24 on it, so that's not really going to be working this saw. Um, I'm going to either try and find NOS parts, or I'm going to try and get this cylinder re-chromed, is where I'm at right now. Sorry, I'm just messing with the oil cap and such. Um, this saw is worth putting some parts into. It doesn't have a whole lot of wear down here. Uh, it's got the extra mount up here like a lot of 288s got. It's missing a screw here for the handlebar, but I'm not super concerned with that. I will find one. Uh, he put this cover on here for me. It's actually in really nice shape. Uh, it's got just a little bit of a decal peeling here, but it's still there. A little bit of paint missing right here. Um, Husqvarna bar that's on it. Like I said, it's an 84 driver. He put a new loop of chain on it. It had a really, really low raker chain on it. After I verify that this runs really well, I'm actually going to put that chain back on it after I put a good edge on it, because it's duller than hell. And, uh, just kind of see what the guy was cutting with. Um, I don't know the guy that got this, or had this. Uh, one of Wayne's friends knows him. That's the buddy that I got this from. And I'm just super excited to have it. He wanted a smaller saw, and Wayne had a smaller saw. Uh, I think he actually got a rebuilt 350. So, and then Wayne and I came upon a price, and I decided it was a good enough price to make it worth it. But like I said, it does have a little bit of carbon scoring. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's carbon scoring. The rings are intact. They are, they don't have any marks on them at all. Uh, he was honest with me and let me know it did have some scoring, which... I was going to be amazed if it didn't. Um, sorry, I had to pause for a minute. 
like I was saying, I, I would have been amazed if it didn't have any scoring at all, but it's still got amazing compression. I mean, it'll probably stand right up. Oh yeah, it's standing right up, a couple foot off the ground. I mean, that rope ain't hardly moved. Yeah, this thing's got really nice compression. Um, for those of you that don't know what a 298 XP is, it is pretty much, with some minor differences, the exact same saw as a 2100 or a 2101 XP. Um, the 2101 and 2100s both had a manual oiler back here, and it was a plunger that went, let me get situated. It had a plunger that went in between the seam, between the gas tank and the oil tank, and down into the oil tank. Well, the common problem with most 2100s or 2101s is the oiler leaks oil into the gas tank or gas into the oil tank. They've got little O-rings in them, and they don't, uh, they tend to not seal up the best. But, uh, still got the original starter handle, these little tiny little handles he used back in the day but they do work um he put a new kill switch in it for me because the kill switch that was in it wasn't working this is actually out of a home light but it doesn't matter it's the same switch uh said everything's here everything works it's got a little bit of a fuel line leak so i'm not going to run it uh any more than i already have i just wanted to verify that it did run um so I got to get a fuel line for it, and then I got to keep an eye out for either some NOS parts or uh, really, really nice aftermarket or uh, re-chroming and then NOS or aftermarket piston. Because I'm not so much worried about the piston. I just don't want to do this saw in injustice by putting a really crappy Chinese aftermarket cylinder on it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like, if I'm going to put a cylinder on this, the only thing that's going to go on it other than OEM is going to be a highway or a meteor. Uh, just because otherwise, <laughs> you take basically a 100cc saw and you put a really crappy cylinder on it. And then you're upset because it doesn't have the power that it should. And, well, the cylinder's probably why. But... <clears throat> the air filter under here is actually in really good shape. I'm not going to take this screw out. Because uh, it has a, for whatever reason, the guy that owned it before me lost the original screw for the air filter cover. So as you can see, it's got a T27, probably a steel screw in it. But uh, the other thing I would like to get working if I can is this chain brake. Just because you don't see a lot of these chain brakes anymore. Uh, and usually if you do, at least on the, the smaller 200 series, usually they're busted out right here. Uh, not so much on these bigger ones for whatever reason, like the, the 181, uh, and the 2100s and the 2101s all use the same cover, and I think the two early 288s did also, that had a metal chain break. Uh, what I mean by a metal chain break is this handle is actually like an aluminum hollow tube instead of just a plastic flag. Uh, well, give me just a second. I'll show you the differences between the handles. My garage is a mess, so don't make fun of me. My 395 is back here in all of the mess that is my garage. You see how this has a single flag also. It's not attached down here like a 372. It's not attached, see? There's just the one side on the chain side cover. Because uh, they have the chain brake in this clutch cover. Very similar. But this is more of a clutch setup in here. It's got a lot of moving parts. Where the newer ones are just a spring and a, a small lever. Um, this is the metal handle. I call it metal handle. And this is the plastic flag on the 395 well if for those of you that don't know this is my 
395 slash 394. Everything on the internals of the saw is 394 except the cylinder. I got it blown up. Uh, for those of you that know, you can't get 394 cylinders anymore. So instead of just letting a saw sit, I put a 395 OEM on it. And it runs really, really well. I'm not upset with going to a 395 top end. I also had to get a new OEM recoil because mine exploded. And I've put a little bit nicer top covers on this saw. Eventually, this saw is going to get uh, new top covers, probably a new tank, and a new handle, and a new clutch cover. Because I want to make this saw look a little nicer than it is. And probably a new muffler. Or a pipe, I'm not sure which yet. Uh, but this saw is coming apart this winter. Uh, my bar studs are question they're they're not failing but they're they're kind of messed up my bar nuts are a little hard to get on and off and uh when i put this saw together the first time i didn't put bearings and seals in it i'm gonna go ahead and put bearings and seals in it this time because i do not want this saw blowing up i do not have enough uh money invested in this saw to the point where it's like okay do i really want to put any more money in it like I don't have shit for money in this saw. The money I have put in this saw has more than paid for itself back with the money it has made me. So as far as I'm concerned, I have zero dollars in this saw. And that's why I'm just going to go ahead and pull it down and split it. And we're going to put bearings and seals in it. I'll pause you guys till I get back outside. Okay, we're almost back outside. Like I said, I figured I would show off. 298 this morning and uh, I'm getting ready to go to work Let's see what time it be 836 so I'm getting ready to head into work here in just a few minutes uh, I figured I would show this saw off a little bit hopefully get some views out of it uh, I just want to say uh, I see the new subscribers and I thank you for subscribing to the channel and being uh, a little more patient on my video posting a um, lot going on in the background that you guys aren't seeing and that's that's my fault that's not yours but uh, I just appreciate the uh, patience on the videos I gotta order another tripod I gotta talk to some people and make sure they're okay with me taking videos uh, and their property because my my cutting area I was cutting at for the past you know 20 some years or basically as long as I've been running saw anyway uh, it's not that they don't want me back it's that some circumstances happened and I don't I'm not going to be going back for a while so uh, I got a different cutting area and I got a, a tree service dump yard I can cut at that's probably where I'll run that 298 next uh, I'm going to probably make sure it runs really solid and then uh, I'm going to start looking into getting some parts, talk to some people that uh, might, big on the might, might have parts. Uh, I'm not going to not gonna reveal my sources, we'll put it that way. I'm um, going to try and find a new OEM cylinder if I can get it. If I can't, I'm going to try and find at least an OEM piston and then get that OEM cylinder re-chromed if I can do that. I know there's companies out there doing it. I'm just, I reached out to one and they're basically only doing it through a shop, which I think is kind of horse shit, but uh, it's whatever. But anyway, guys, I'm going to let you go. I got to go get my boots on and get ready for work. So, talk to you later.